Well, hello, Oddballs. It's your host, Bobby. And your co-host, Lexi. And this is Oddities on on Elm Street. Welcome back for episode 19. Yes, and What week are we in? (laughs) You will be hearing this week 12. Wow. Wow. So... Today, we have a topic suggestion from one of our Patreons. So oh, wait. You want to do the shout out? We got another Patreon. Oh, my God. So excited. Y'all, it's Maintenance Mind. Maintenance Mind. Welcome to the club. <laughs> thank you so much, Maintenance Mike. Yes, thank you for being here, yep. for your support. You laughed at our photos, and it was heartwarming. What <laughs> photos? Because I went up to him and was like, you joined? And I, I asked if he had looked at the photos that you posted yet. Oh, my God. And then okay. he pulled it up right then and there. I was like, oh, my. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was an interesting time of our lives. Yeah, sure was. But, yeah. <sighs> Thank you, Maintenance Mike. Yeah, we appreciate you so much. And also, if you have a topic suggestion for us, then you can go to our Patreon and sign up. And then you can send it to us. Wherever you want. Whatever makes your day will do. Maybe not whatever, (laughs) but... (laughs) So yeah, our patron, Coffin Sir Lee, chose this topic for today, and it's a very good one. And I've actually, I've researched this a lot before because it's always really interested me. Mostly because I watched American Horror Story. Uh, so. Yeah, I had, I did not know about it. Which surprises me because didn't you go to New Orleans? I did. I'm just going to say that it was not geared in the direction that I would have liked it but uh Aww. I got to go and it was cool I maybe went to some agricultural <laughs> <laughs> what did you go there for Center. my ex's family is like the farmer's bureau and they go on trips every year they've been to like Hawaii a few times like but what did they do uh, in these places I don't know they just talk about agriculture I got, I don't know, there's like tractors. And then <laughs> you went to Louisiana to see some tractors. Wow. I got some sunscreen for free. That's worth it right there. Yeah. Um, but, you know, they paid for the hotel. Well, yeah, why wouldn't you go? So. Get out of this miserable state. Yeah. <laughs> It was fun. I wish that maybe we could have done a few more things. We did go to the Deaf Museum, and oh. that was very neat. That was very neat. See, that's more than I did when I was in New Orleans. I went there with the church. Oh, yeah. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Boy. We should. We need we to, to redo go. that <laughs> for sure. <laughs> uh, all right. So, yeah, if you if you watched American Horror Story... You might recognize this. So I guess, I guess I'll start. Hello. <laughs> you know, we have, Check. it's always a hello and there's always excavate. And I have the in here. <laughs> Jesus. I know, it's just, it's right it's in ritual. line. <laughs> right. So, on April 10th, 1834, a fire broke out at the La Lurie Mansion in New Orleans, Louisiana. While rescuers enter the attic of the home, they're met with the biggest shock of their lives. Marie Delphine McCarthy was born in March of 1787 to Louis Bartholomew. I should have looked up these names. God damn it. I always do this myself. And Marie Jean, I believe is how it's pronounced because she's French. I need to stop. Okay. Her father was a rich Irish man and her mother was a French woman who was previously a widow. At the time of Delphine's childhood, New Orleans and much of the rest of Louisiana was still under Spanish control. 
Delphine's parents were super prominent in New Orleans during this time. They owned a huge mansion, and she grew up very privileged. They owned slaves, as was, it was fairly common during this time. Mm -hmm. When Delphine was four years old, the Haitian Revolution began, which I, not a lot of people know this. Haiti is actually the only country that was able to pull off like a huge rebellion where thousands of enslaved people overthrew the colonists. I know, it's so impressive. Way to go, Haiti. I love that about them. That's neat. So the Haitian Revolution is going on during Delphine's childhood, and people in the southern United States, they start to get a little nervous that the people that they have enslaved would do the same thing. Mm -hmm. And Delphine's uncle had actually been murdered by his slaves. Oi. Yeah. I mean... I don't feel bad. No. No. Yeah, so... (laughs) I mean, and that's kind of important for later, so just file that away for mm-hmm. for now. But around the age of 13, Delphine was married off to a man named Don Ramon de Lopez. He was, like, a high-ranking officer in Spain. Don Ramon was widowed. It was rumored that the reason Delphine was married at such a young age was actually because she'd become pregnant. With his baby. So it was kind of like a shotgun wedding, I guess. Wait, what age? What's 13. So yeah, they uh, they think she was pregnant. But this is like all speculation. and But they think this because of some letters that they found between the two of them. Where Don Ramon said that he he wanted to save the family's reputation. And that's why he married her. So Great. you can only draw so many conclusions from that. But we don't know this for sure because no baby ever came of it, either because she never gave birth or because the baby passed shortly after she did. We do know, though, that Delphine definitely became pregnant with Don Ramon's baby when she was around 17. And at this time, he was traveling back and forth between Louisiana and Spain. And it was actually that trip across the ocean from Spain to Louisiana that killed his first wife. So Don Ramon was called to appear at the court of Spain. And as he was en route to Madrid, his boat was shipwrecked and he suddenly died off the coast of Havana. Delphine gave birth to their daughter just a few days later. That's kind of sad. Yeah. And she, she actually named the baby after Don Ramon's first wife. Well, that's kind of nice. I know. It's hard to imagine that somebody who's, like, so evil like her could do something kind of like... Like, is it a facade? Or does she literally just, like, because have this, two this, sides? This girl later grows up and is beat for feeding slaves, so it's like... Yeah. It's not all that heartwarming. For feeding slaves? Yeah. Yeah. I'm Ye- enough. Yeah. What, like, was she not supposed to feed them? Right. You're right. She was not supposed to feed the slaves. We'll, we'll get into that later. Okay, okay. Yeah. So Delphine marries again in 1808, and this time it's to a man named Jean Blanc. Mm. I have a terrible French accent. <laughs> but Jean Blanc, he was, he was kind of a hustler. He did everything. Like, he was known to be a banker, a lawyer, a merchant. Like, you know, he's just out there. Yeah, he's just out there making that cash. So, at the time of this marriage, Delphine was around 21. And the two of them together, they had four children. But Jean Blanc also died young, leaving her a widow yet again in 1816 with five children now. Couldn't be me. (sighs) And I honestly, I think that because of her status, this was all fine and dandy. But if she hadn't been wealthy, white woman, you know, brought up in a a high class family, Mm -hmm. um, she would have been booked in that society. Yeah. In that time. For sure. Yeah. So 
Between her second and her third marriage, her mother died, and then shortly after that, her father died, so she inherited a good amount of money and some land from them. So now she was a rich widow. Hmm. And oh, helps. <laughs> right? <laughs> so when her parents passed away, she not only inherited those things, but she inherited their human beings. Hmm. These enslaved people did all of the work around the plantation inside the house. They tended to Delphine herself and they raised her children for her. Mm-hmm. I don't like this mm-hmm. one at all. Mm-hmm. If there's a hell, I hope she's there. Oh, she is. Yeah. So then on June 25th, 1825, Delphine marries her third husband, Leonard Luis Nicholas Lalaurie. He was literally like fresh off the boat when Delphine scooped him up. <laughs> fresh me. <meat. laughs> uh, he had a degree in medicine and he just so happened to be 15 years younger than Delphine, which during this time, like we were saying, was it was totally normal for a man to be much, much older than his wife. Well, heaven forbid, vice versa. Right, you know, double standards. And, like, Delphine's two husbands, her first two, they were twice her age. Totally normal, right? But because of the woman, God forbid. So Delphine becomes pregnant with her sixth child. And Leonard, after this just decides to leave for five months. (laughs) They don't know where he went, but he was just like, okay, bye. What? (laughs) Yeah. And then five months later, he's like, okay, I'm back. (laughs) And then he married her. So very strange situation. Those two. I don't, I don't know. I think there were like letters that they found between Leonard and his father, where his father was really just encouraging him to like, just marry her. And get the money and, like, come back home and you can practice medicine in our little French neighborhood. Uh, Who knows? So, (laughs) soon after this, in 1828, Delphine is called before the court because of cruelty against her slaves. And she was actually investigated multiple times for this reason, but nothing was ever done. But rumors about Delphine began to swirl among the locals. Yeah, because there were there were accusations about the cruelty. But then, like, since they were so high up in society, yeah. people still wanted to, like, come party at their house. And they would see, like, I forget what they call it, but they have, there's, like, one slave. He was just always around, and I yeah. guess they, I heard that she would occasionally give the slave, the last sips of her wine, and everyone thought that was just so nice. Yeah. Have my back wash. Yeah, I know. <laughs> right? That's disgusting. Yeah. And that he didn't look malnourished. So she can't. Yeah. She can't be. And she was beautiful. So mm-hmm. people, you know, see this beautiful woman who's high society, throws yeah. all these great parties, and I feel like people are easy to talk themselves out of. I don't even know. I don't know. Help me out. Well, they'd they'd kind of think maybe they were crazy for thinking that she could ever be capable of the things she was actually doing. Mm -hmm. And yeah, you're right. The the one man that she brought everywhere, people just kind of thought that was representative of how she was standard treating the rest of Mm -hmm. um the people she owned and um so i think that definitely like allowed her to get away with it for far too long people can like talk themselves out of it seeing that yeah they're rationalizing exactly like okay yeah i'll still associate with her i'll go to her parties she couldn't possibly be doing any of that right Delphine and her new husband, Leonard, they move into a big home at 1140 Royal Street, and that's in the heart of New Orleans' French Quarter. It was a new construction that Delphine saw, and she really, really wanted it, so she sold some of her properties to be able to afford it. 
And then, um, like you were saying, the one slave she had that she favored over the others, his name was Bastion. He was treated a lot better than the rest of them. But in return, he was kind of required to, like, give Delphine all the tea of, like, what was going around Ooh. the properties. Interesting. So, I did not know that. Yeah. So he actually, like, snitched on Delphine's daughters. They were sneaking food to the other slaves in the house, which is, it's so sad to think that, like, her own children knew better than her. I mean, that's what we hope for, right? That our our children are better than us. Yeah. But no, but, like, she was known geez. to beat her kids because they were feeding the slaves food because, uh, which is so strange to me because these people are like doing work for you, right? Um, wouldn't you want them to be well fed and taken care of? There's no, I mean, you own people. Like, I feel like logic is just not there. And be- because of who the heck she is, as a nasty person, she probably just took joy in watching people yeah. be miserable. And still expecting them to do the work that she expects. Well, at that point, like, you, you'd you have to. Because these people weren't even able to work because they were chained up. So, he, Bastion, he was seen out with Delphine pretty regularly. So, you know, people just assume that that... Because, Standard. Yeah, exactly. Because he looked fine and healthy, whatever, mm-hmm. then the rest of them are probably too. But the rumors about Delphine, they continued spreading even after they moved into their new home. And these rumors slowly started to begin proving true. Sometime around 1889, a neighbor saw a young girl running frantically through the mansion's yard being chased by Delphine, who had a whip in her hand. The girl ran through the house, running desperately up the stairs to try to get away. With Delphine still right behind her, the girl made it out to the roof, where from there she plummeted to her death. Police were called in to investigate because, again, at this time it's still legal to own humans, but you were, you're, I mean, you're certainly able to punish them, but there are certain guidelines laid out to discourage excessive physical cruelty. cruelty. Right. So it's okay to, like, own literal human beings but you can only be so abusive towards them i mean i guess it's like a step in the right direction but still dear lord yeah how do you how do you rationalize that? I don't know. so even though the authorities found several slaves in deplorable conditions at the lollery mansion delphine was never really punished i think she had like a minor fine she had nine slaves taken away from her as a result but They were taken away only to be sold back into slavery. And what did Delphine do? She paid her family to repurchase these people and sneak them back onto her property. How fucked. She's deranged. Like, you're like, okay, I'm out of here. Thank God. And then before you fucking know it, you're just right back. And Can you imagine, no, like, no. the fear of being forced to walk back onto that property and face that sadistic bitch? Mm-mm, mm-mm. God, I can't. Mm. The neighbor who saw that girl fall, they said they believed the girl was only eight years old. But another woman gave an account that the girl was a 12-year-old girl named Leah. So, this little girl had been brushing Delphine's hair when it snagged on the brush. And that's the reason that Delphine grabbed a whip and started chasing her. Because the girl accidentally pulled her hair. The neighbor recalled hearing the awful sound of this little girl's body hitting the ground. And then being scooped up by Delphine. Her body was described as being bent over with her limbs dangling as if every bone had been broken in that fall. Oh my god. Then, at night, this neighbor saw the body brought back outside, and a shallow hole was dug under the light of a small torch. But it was also rumored later that the girl's body was found in a well 
on the property. There were funeral registrations to document the deaths of 12 slaves under her ownership between the years of 1830 and 1834. (gasps) Four years, 12 people. Some of these 12 deaths include a cook along with her four children. Like, how does that? The, her four, like the cook's four children? The cook's four children. Wow. A 13-year-old named Juliet a 10-year-old named Florence, and a 4-year-old named Leontin, I believe. But on these funeral records, none of their causes of deaths were ever listed. (sighs) So... They're all so young. Yeah, they, um, like, literal (sighs) children are being forced into this. I... Actually, had a breakdown over this when I was listening to a podcast on this because she was talking about how, you know, like slavery during this time, these parents are having to watch their children be sold to these people. And just the thought of that, like, you know, me as a a mother now picturing, like, anytime my child has a cough. I'm, like, scared to death that something's going to happen to him. Mm -hmm. Like, I can't imagine the thought of, like, first of all, them being taken away. And then, secondly, knowing. Knowing about the mistreatment that's going on. And how they're going to suffer and you can't be there for them. Like, that's just... I cannot imagine. Yeah. So... Delphine and Leonard, they now have this beautiful home together, but they are still having marital issues. And on November 16th, 1832, Delphine actually applied for a separation on the basis that her husband was reportedly abusing her. And I guess these claims were backed up by her son and then and two of her daughters. Everyone in the neighborhood knew that they had really vicious fights. So, after she's applied for this separation, Leonard left. But it's not entirely clear what the status of their relationship was at the time because we do know for certain that Leonard was at the mansion on the day the fire broke out on April 10th, 1834. And she applied back in 1832, two years later. So, it's not known if they were trying to get back together, work things out, Mm -hmm. whatever, but... Interesting. I don't really give a fuck, you know? (laughs) Whatever. Breach. The fire started in the kitchen. Back in this time, the kitchens were typically in an outbuilding that was either, like, semi-detached or completely detached from the house. Mm Mm-hmm. And uh, because they had their enslaved workers cooking food for them, those areas were considered slave quarters. So when the fire first started, the big worry was that it would spread to the main residency, where, as you can imagine, they had a lot of expensive shit in there. So when local residents began rushing to the scene to help, they tried to enter the slave quarters to ensure that everyone had made it out safely. But Delphine refused to give them the keys. Fucking shit bag. (sighs) She instead was more worried about getting her furniture. Get, get, forget them, grab the valuables. Yeah. Like, just want to... <laughs> exactly. <Yes. laughs> oh, God. So these people, they actually had to break down the door mm-hmm. to get in. And when they finally gained entry, they were met with the most terrorizing sight I could ever imagine. Was it the... I thought it was the attic. I heard... I heard different things. I heard... Like, there's a comment that um, the woman who started the fire, she makes a comment saying that when slaves are taken to the attic, they never come back. Good lord. Well, so I, I guess what I heard was that Delphine's like, get the valuables, blah, blah, blah. Well, people mm-hmm. are like, we know that you have slaves. Like, where are they? And that um, they heard that there were people in the attic. 
and that Delphine wouldn't give them the key to up there. So the firemen broke it. So, I don't know. There's it's obviously so... a lot of conflicting information. But regardless, she didn't give a fuck about her slaves who she had chained up. And she didn't, she just didn't want anyone to know that that was the case. So, yeah. she just tried to nonchalantly disregard them and have people get her valuables instead of focusing on people, human beings. Yeah. Yeah, see, that's, like, this whole case, there's so much, like, uh, legend mixed right. in with fact, so right. it's really hard to know, like, what actually happened. Mm-hmm. But I heard that, like, the firemen came in, they had to break down the door mm-hmm. to the attic, but then I also heard from someone else that they didn't even have a fire department during this time, so it was the locals that had to do it, and that it was in the slave quarters where the fire had started in the kitchen that they had to break into which was detached from the house it's like a lot of yeah uh, mixed just, information right you know right right but yeah that's yeah. not it's not possible to know like what's misinformation and what's fact right like because it's just a story that's been passed down for generations exactly it's not well documented anywhere yeah. like, any they means. don't even know when she actually died they don't even or where know where she was, where she's buried, or they don't. Yeah, they don't even know when she was born. They just know the the month and the year. You know, it's just one of those things, I guess. Yeah, and she was from like a rich, right, high up family, prominent family. So, so yeah, these these locals, they are like bum rushing this door, trying to get into whatever room she was keeping these slaves, and she refuses to give them the keys. So they break down the door to get in, and when they went inside, they find seven slaves horribly mutilated. These people were suspended by their necks, some with, quote, their limbs stretched and torn from one extremity to the other. Some had been imprisoned that way for months. There was an account from a judge who entered the premises He reported finding a woman wearing an iron collar and an older woman with such a deep head wound that she was too weak to walk. This judge questioned Delphine's husband, Leonard, who basically said that people need to mind their own business and to worry about the things going on in their own homes. In 1836, a version of this story about the discovery made by this judge started circulating, adding that the slaves were also incredibly malnourished, which is probably why she was punishing her daughters for feeding them. Mm -hmm. Some showed signs of being flayed, which is like being skinned alive. And others being bound in restrictive postures, wearing spiked iron collars, like forcing them to keep their head in one position so they weren't able to move their head at all. The fire was started by a 70-year-old enslaved woman. She had been chained to the stove by her ankle, which was apparently just something that happened every day. She later stated that she had set the fire as a suicide attempt, which is just... Interesting. I also heard that it was... You know, obviously, this is all speculation. The grandmother of the girl who plummeted to her death. Oh, really? Oh, that's interesting. As revenge. But, you know, oh. legend. Who yeah. Who knows? All we know is that this woman was deranged and fucked in the head. Yeah. And this, um, the woman who started the fire, she said that the slaves that were taken to the attic never came back. And I, she, I guess she said she was also uh, scared about being punished. I don't know what she was anticipating she was going to be punished for. Mm -hmm. But I feel like it's one of those things that, like, if she knows she's going to get taken up to this attic and she's not going to come back, like all the other people that Mm -hmm. went up there, might might as well go by my own hand type of thing. Yeah. So in addition to rescuing these people who were being tortured, the mansion's backyard was also excavated. So, 
<laughs> gotten so good at I that know, part. I've just grown so much. Um, again, speculation, but the podcast Stuff You Missed in History class, they don't believe to actually be true, but as the legend says, apparently when the attic or the slaves quarter, whatever it was, opened, that there was a woman and a man who looked like they had experimental surgery to switch their private parts. And the one that gets me the fucking most, I cannot imagine it, is that a woman had had her bones broken and reset so that she had to walk like a crab Mm -hmm. and that she was so terrified that anytime any of the people who were trying to help her would come close to her, she would shriek and run away. Oh my god. That's horrifying to think about. Like, I can not get that, that picture on yes. her head. Yes. That That's has, so disturbing. That is like one of the most fucked up things. Yeah, and some people, because of like those rumors or whatever you want to call them, mm-hmm believe that the husband was in on it because remember he is he has a degree in medicine which is he's actually has a degree in um tifers he's just a dentist <laughs> tifers <laughs> <laughs> but he's like yeah guys i'm, I'm, I'm a-, a medic <laughs> no big deal <laughs> yeah because he would have like experimental procedures i guess like yeah, a big thing like was back pain. like um it hump hump back yeah like me <laughs> Yeah, hunchback. <laughs> Same thing, right? <laughs> but no, didn't um, Delphine's daughter have a back deformity, and that's how they met? Was she was like one of uh, I don't know his patients or whatever. I could heard, be. I could heard be. that. Not sure if it's true or not, but Just all legend, you know. Yeah. Who? <laughs> yeah, she. Oh God. If I ever hated someone so much in history, this is bitch. <gasps> Yeah, but I feel like all of the hate is put on her when, I, in my opinion, I feel like the husband had to have oh, something. Absolutely. Especially considering his response. Mind your own business. Yeah. Like, the fuck I will. Who are you? Mm. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, I definitely think that he deserves just as much heat for all this because even if he wasn't involved with like doing these crazy experiments he knew, going he knew it was going on and you're just as guilty in my opinion mm-hmm. but yeah so um they excavate the backyard and they find the body of that young girl that fell from the roof mm-hmm. but there were more we don't know exactly how many because again the reports vary but it is known that two of those who were rescued later died from their injuries. So they had to have been in really bad shape or they were taken by the fire. So Delphine managed to escape the house as an angry mob formed outside. The locals were so disgusted by the treatment that these people were receiving that they stormed the house and they destroyed pretty much anything they could get their hands on. Delphine's life after the fire in 1834 isn't well documented, but it's believed that she escaped to Paris on a ship. And the circumstances around her death are also pretty unclear, but it's rumored that she died in France during a boar hunting accident. Which, like, when I heard that, I was like, I hope you fucking suffered. Mm-hmm. <sighs> yeah, I hope a boar got you. Yeah, and you just, slowly like, died. <laughs> You know, how they do with the tusks. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You get what I'm saying? I do. This is interesting. I guess in the 1930s, her tombstone was discovered. And it read, Madame Lalaurie, born Marie Delphine McCarthy, died in Paris December 7th, 1842, at the age of six blank. The rest of it was cut off by, like, the stone being chipped away 
Hmm. And that tombstone was discovered in New Orleans. So confusing. But then the archives in Paris Mm -hmm. state that she died in 1848 at the age of 62. Hmm. Yeah. Uh, Again, again, there's just, there's, it's all just word of mouth. Yeah. The only thing we know for sure is that she did die, thankfully. I hope that she's just burning and suffering wherever she is. Yeah. I hope she has raging hemorrhoids. Yeah. So, as you can imagine, the mansion did not survive. It remained in ruins for another four years following that fire. It was then rebuilt and assumed the appearance that it still has today. Over the following decades, it was used as a public high school, a conservatory of music, an apartment building, a refuge for wayward boys, a bar, a furniture store. And at one point, the house was owned by Nicolas Cage. I didn't know I heard that. I was like, what the hell? Which is so interesting to me because he never lived in the house and then he lost it in a foreclosure. Like, aren't you rich? Don't you, didn't you steal the Declaration of Independence? (laughs) Am I wrong? Maybe I'm thinking of someone else. I don't know. So yeah, the house now, it's a private residence, which is kind of sad. You can't tour it. It kind of sucks. But they do like tours on the outside. And I guess that's not even really the original house and like whatever, but. No, I don't know. So as the years have gone on, more and more folklore surrounding the house has spread. So it's hard to know what's truth and what's exaggeration. Mm-hmm. An author named John de la Vie wrote in the book Ghost Stories of Old New Orleans um, that when entering Delphine's mansion, it was even worse than what was reported. They said in their book that enslaved people had their eyes gouged out, their fingernails pulled out by the roots, their ears hanging off, their lips sewn together. Their intestines pulled out and knotted around their waist. Holes in their skulls with sticks inserted into their brains. Oh my god. Another account was published in the book Journey into Darkness, Ghosts and Vampires of New Orleans. This book recited that following the fire, a victim was found with her arms amputated and then, uh, that was the book that cited that that woman had her bones broken and reset so that she resembled a crab. <sighs> it was also rumored that Delphine bathed in the blood of her slaves or used their blood as like a face mask to keep her skin young. And I think that's how it how she was portrayed in American Horror Story, but I I could be wrong. It's been a few years since I've seen it. So the house, understandably, is one of the most haunted houses in America and is considered the most haunted house in New Orleans. I mean, like, how can a place like that not be haunted? So paranormal reports on the house actually go back for almost 200 years. There have been a lot of reports of, like, groaning noises coming from the attic, as well as just an overall sense of dread and negativity radiating from the house. In 1894, it said that a tenant who lived in the mansion when it was converted into apartments was brutally murdered in his room. His belongings appeared to have been ransacked as if someone was searching for something, but there was nothing missing. So police are going around and they're interviewing his neighbors and his friends, and they hear something interesting. One of the man's friends claimed that he had been having problems with spirits in his house. And this this man that died, he told his friend that there was a demon in his house that wasn't going to rest until he had met his end. Oi. And that's, I mean, that's what happened, so. 
the case went unsolved. Many suspect that Delphine was influenced to inflict pain on her slaves by the murder of her uncle by the Haitian Mm. slaves back in the 1700s. And while this could be a possibility, I think sometimes people are just plain evil. And evil needs no motivation. Well, well where can where can people find you? Oh my god, this again. <laughs> um I posted did you notice I posted all of the links in the description of the podcast. Oh, look at you go. I'm very proud of you. Thanks. <laughs> but no, what I was gonna say though is um if you enjoyed the story, mm-hmm. please be sure to rate our podcast wherever you're listening from. I oh, love that. Because then when people read it, then it puts us like, yeah. up, and then they get recommended. And it... Please give us five stars. <laughs> <laughs> please. Please. Yeah, so that is the end of our episode for today. I hope you all have a wonderful week. And remember to always keep keep it spooky. spooky.